The next thing we wanted to touch was, okay, let's just talk about a couple of free agents and where you think they might end up. We'll just do it kind of quick. But quarterback, Kirk Cousins. I'm going to say two spots, Atlanta or Pittsburgh. What do you think? <laughs> I know, Pete, that there's a big thing going around on the Internet saying the 49ers. And they're saying, really? let, let Purdy um, learn under this guy. Purdy Plus doesn't need one. to learn. Purdy yeah. doesn't need to learn it under anybody. His so. first year, yes. This year, he was right up there in the running for MVP. So he doesn't need to learn under anybody. No. So I agree with you. And I would throw New England into that conversation, Pete. I'd say Pittsburgh, New England, Atlanta. New England, the only thing is, I think New England really likes where they are in the draft and who they probably are eyeing up. And, it, you know, a lot of people think it's Jalen Daniels or whatever. We'll see how that goes. How about wide receiver? I'll give you – I think these two guys, I think there's two of the best uh, receivers that are going to be in the free agency are both going to most likely get the franchise tag anyway. Unless you say differently, what do you think about Mike Evans from the Buccaneers? He's only a six foot five, 230 pound wide receiver who every year goes for about a thousand yards, John. The guy's pretty incredible. He's had a great year uh, career in, in Tampa. And T. Higgins, who's the younger guy, who's still an amazing uh, receiver for sure. Any thoughts on, on either of those guys? Do you think that I think they franchise tag them, but if they don't, where do you think somebody like that ends up? I mean, I think there's a lot of teams out there that would like either of these two guys. Yeah, well, Evans beat. Clearly, if the if Kansas City's playing for a three-peat, and as long as they have uh, Mahomes, they should be, yeah. um, I get Evans, yeah. and I pay him um, because that guy's got the size and the hands and, and you know, the stats – that show he's not just um, a fast big man. Um, he is like Metcalf, Pete. He's a fast big man that has great awareness of where he is on the field. Can turn and catch the ball in a moment's notice to the inside or to the outside or whatever. I like him. And I think you put Evans on Kansas City, everybody else in the league throws up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Throws I think you're right. Up. Just yeah. Throw. Yeah. Because what are they going to do? You got the tight end with Kelsey, who's about the same size. So what, what are you going to do? All right. How about this one, John? Uh, Derek Henry. Now, this guy is a, a freak show. He's athletic as all get out. I know he's getting a little bit older. But if, if you're a team that's close and you've got a decent quarterback, but he needs a little extra time because maybe the old line's not great, Derek Henry's probably a good guy to get because he's going to scare the defense that he's going to get the ball. But is there any team out there that you uh, you perceive would maybe want to pay him some money, you know, pretty pretty damn good money probably, to go to? I'm going to tell you the Ravens was, was the choice I had. And the only reason I say that, the Ravens got all these running backs, and yet they don't have anybody. <laughs> I mean, it ends up being Lamar Jackson. And I don't think, you know, I think Lamar even would say, you know, I'd like to be able to give the ball to somebody else who can get six yards. <laughs> And that's what Derrick Henry does. So that's why I think he's kind of a missing piece over there because they've got good running backs, but they haven't really performed the way I think Derrick Henry could be the guy. Right. Well, and Pete, he's been in the league now. Um, let's see. He came out in 2015 or 2016, right around there, out of Alabama. Um, he is a beast, 6'3", 250, you know, <laughs> and he is a man child. He runs over people. I'll say another place that needs him, Pete, is Dallas. Yeah. So you yeah. put that guy in the backfield in Dallas, and mm -hmm. it's a different deal when you're Pollard or anybody else at Dallas and you're trying to, you know, be the marquee running back. Uh, but this guy is a marquee running back. And the last thing that anybody facing Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboy offense with all of their weapons, the last thing they'd want to see is this guy in the backfield. And yep. he'd also last a couple of years longer, Pete, because you don't need to run him every down like Tennessee. Right. Happiest guy in Dallas would be the quarterback. All right, next I'll, I'll, I'll throw this one out to you, John. Edge rushers. And I'm going to go with – there's a million of them out there right now, and a lot, it seems like all of them are free agents this year. So to try to select any of them individually is very difficult, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I'm going to give you Daniil Hunter. And the reason I put him up there as the guy – he fell into the category that you were just talking about, performance pay, John. They didn't want to pay this guy, and I thought it was foolish, and I, and I still think it was foolish. So the only way they could keep him at all 
was to say, all right, we'll give you some performance pay. We're going to give you a million dollars for every sack you get over a certain number. Well, he had his best year ever for sacks <laughs> and tackles for a loss. So he ended up making $17 million this past year. Not so bad. Still well below some of the other defensive ends that are out there that are great players as well. But nonetheless, at least he got his money. And I think he proved he's not that old yet. He can still play. He's 28, 29 years old. He's still got three, four years left in him. John, I'm going to say he goes to Detroit and the Minnesota Vikings are going to be licking their wounds when they're going to have to play against him twice a year. Because if you got Hutchinson on one side, you got all this money under the salary cap and you put him on the other side and Daniil Hunter is still built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, he's unbelievable. The guy is in the best shape of any player in the NFL. I don't care who it is. Wide receivers, tight ends. Daniil Hunter really comes in ready to play all the time. He's the, he the fastest guy ever to get to 50 sacks. I mean, he everything he's done, he's done the right way, and he's not gotten appreciated by the Vikings, in my opinion. So what do you think about him? Because Detroit has massive cap space right now. Well, and Pete, what about the other one? What about Marcus Davenport? Yeah, that's another I mean, guy. Injuries was his problem this past year with the Vikings. They signed him to a pretty big contract. He had injuries, and that, that was the, the main issue that they had. But, you know, that's parts of the problems with the Vikings, I think, is they've, they've got a lot of baseball guys in there making baseball decisions for a football team. That's the way I would frame it. Yeah, they're playing money ball with these yeah. guys. And you can't, especially um, because of the injury factor that you mentioned, Pete. I mean, he was a first-round pick when he came out, Pete. Uh, the Saints took him like 12th or 15th or whatever. Um, he is a beast, but he hasn't been able to put together a complete season. Yeah. And that's a problem. But if he did, this guy could be uh, just like Daniil Hunter. He could be that kind of player. 6'6", six, yeah. six, so great leverage, 270, fast as heck. He runs a 4'5", five, five, I think, Pete. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> this is one of those big men that nobody on the outside wants to see, and especially if you've got a situation like San Francisco does where you've got Bosa on one side, you don't want somebody fast on the other side because you don't have enough players to help. Right. Well, and the last thing I'll leave you with is this. The combine begins today. <laughs> so the paper champions and some of the real guys are going to be out there showing what they can do because there's going to be more guys running four three forties than we've ever seen before. The problem for some of those guys is they never showed it on the field. And, and hopefully yeah. these general managers actually realize, you know, the film doesn't lie. <laughs> we know what the stopwatch says, but the film doesn't lie. And some of these guys are going to get boosted up because they're going to have a great bench press, a great 40 time. Maybe it's the cone drill, whatever it is. And then suddenly some guy's going to be a fifth rounder is suddenly moved into the first round and all these guys fall in love with them, which is always interesting, but that's part of the beauty of the combine too, John. Yeah. Well, like you said last week, Pete, I saw a bunch of the HBCU players, Mm -hmm. um, fantastic athletes, obviously. Um, and we're talking about the same athletes, Pete, but just yep. for one reason or another, didn't get recruited or chose not to attend the big schools and instead mm -hmm. went to a historically black college or university. Mm -hmm. Nothing against that. But, and this is a big but, there's a reason physically a lot of them didn't go. I saw mm -hmm. a kid run a 435, Pete, but he's a 168 pound D bag. Yeah. That defensive back is just <laughs> going to get steamrolled. He doesn't want Derrick Henry, Henry running the football his way, John. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, you know, do you just run the other way? Yeah. You've got one guy, 6'3", 250, the other guy, 168 pounds. He might be able to jump. He might be 4'3", Pete, but if he gets hit, he's done. Yeah. So there's a reason that you know speed does kill and you can't coach speed and all the other things we can say about fast players, but it ain't just speed. Mm -hmm. And that kid, I mean him, don't no disrespect, and I didn't even use his name, but I don't think that kid can really play in the NFL at that size. That's He's pretty got small and pounds, or he is done. 
that's that small is very dangerous. I can tell you. I mean, uh, you, you see it all the time, and and there's a reason why these guys do tend to be a little bit bigger than normal people, <laughs> because because there's some running backs. Hell, there's some quarterbacks out there. You who wants to get in front of Josh Allen running at you at about a four five five at six five two fifty? I mean, you yeah. know, let's be honest. It's, yeah, there's it's a lot of linebackers that don't want any of that. You're right. <laughs> 